Good morning, students. This is Miss Khyati Dwarkadas welcoming you to Nationalism in Europe, a revision time. I know that we have studied this chapter, and at the end of this chapter, you would be able to know the meaning of the word nationalism, know the causes of the French Revolution and its outcome. Analyze the impact of the French Revolution on other European nations. Learn about the unification of Germany and Italy, as well as understand what imperialism and nationalism stood for. So let's take a quick glance at the rise of nationalism in Europe. We've uh, studied about Frederick Swarrow who in 1848 visualized the world as a democratic and social republic. Emergence of nationalism as a force that swept changes in politics and the mentality of Europe, as well as development of a concept of nation state with citizens having common identity and history. When we spoke about the French Revolution and the idea of a nation, we did the French Revolution of 1789, which led to the transfer of sovereignty from the monarchy to a body of citizens. Various practices adopted to develop a sense of collective identity among people. Declaration of mission to liberate Europe from despotism, as well as setting up of Jacobin clubs by educated middle class and the students of Europe. So in grade 9 and 10, in the French Revolution, children, you have covered all these topics. Then we have also covered measures introduced to develop collective identity. And if you realize, there are so, so, so many measures. Ideas of la patrie and la citoyenne were emphasized. Adoption of a new constitution with citizens enjoying equal rights. Adoption of the tricolor as the new French flag replacing royal standard. Adoption of uniform system of weights and measures. The Estates General was renamed as the National Assembly. Abolition of internal custom duties. New hymns were composed and oaths were taken. Martyrs remembered in the name of the nation. Formulation of centralized and administrative systems. French became the national language and discouraging of regional dialects. At the same time, we studied the Napoleonic Civil Code of 1804 or the Napoleonic Code. This included privileges based on birth, abolished and equal. Sorry, privileges based on birth were abolished. Equality before law was established. Establishment of the right to property. Administrative divisions were simplified. The feudal system was abolished. Peasants were freed from serfdom and manorial dues. Removal of guild restrictions in towns. Improvement in transport and communication systems. Uniform laws and standardization of weights and measures, adoption of a common national currency. If you have still not opened the text, children, I'd like you to open the text and look for these things as points and number them in your text, just to help you recall where all of this features. Alternatively, you can jot down these points in your notebook as a remembrance. However, it's not mandatory to note it down because the video is going to be with you always. When we talk of the making of nationalism in Europe, we talk about aristocracy and the new middle class. Landed aristocracy dominated society and politics, though small but was powerful. 
Industrialization began in France in the 19th century that led to the evolution of working middle class. <coughs> Excuse me. Educated liberal middle classes popularized abolition of aristocratic privileges. Talking about liberal nationalism, we have it divided into two spheres, political and economic. We talk with, about the political sphere first. Government by consent, end of autocracy, adoption of the constitution, representative government through parliament, abolition of property rights, equality before law. In the economic sphere, freedom of market, removal of state-imposed restrictions, movement of goods and capital. Moving on to new conservatism after 1815. So first we need to understand what is conservatism. It is a belief of preservation of old traditions and institutions like monarchy, church, social setup, property, and family. And we have a new settlement for Europe under conservatism. After defeating Napoleon, Britain, Russia, Prussia, and Austria drew the Treaty of Vienna in 1815. And the main motive was to undo the changes initiated by Napoleon and to restore monarchy. Now, when we talk of the Treaty of Vienna of 1815, we need to look at the treaty. Provisions of the Treaty of Vienna 1815, restoration of the Bourbon dynasty, territories acquired by Napoleon were taken back. It prevented French expansion in future. Prussia was given new territories on its western border, including Saxony. Austria to control northern Italy, no change in German confederation of 39 states, and Russia was to get Poland. Features of conservative regimes, so we have the autocratic regime, we have no tolerance to criticism and dissent, no questioning about the government, and severe censorship on many things. This brings us to the revolutionaries. Now, when we talk of the revolutionaries, we have the establishment of secret societies to spread the ideas of nationalism and oppose conservatism. We remember Giuseppe Mazzini, who opposed monarchy. Mazzini viewed nations to be necessary for humanity, inspired other secret societies in Germany, France, Switzerland, and Poland. Giuseppe Mazzini joined one such society of Carboneri. Later, he found the young Italy in Marseilles and young Europe in Bern. Conservatives were frightened by his move. Coming to the age of revolutions, this age was between 1830 and 1848. And this brought you the romantic imagination and national feeling. So we've done romanticism in the chapter videos. Hunger, hardship and popular revolt as well as 1848, the revolution of the liberals. So if you go back to the chapter videos, you will find great details about these topics. Then to I have romantic imagination and national feeling here where we speak about culture created idea of a nation, art, poetry, stories, music shape nationalist feelings, romantic artists criticize reason and science, emotions, institutions and mystical feelings were encouraged, popularized true spirit of the nation collected local folklore to spread nationalism even among illiterates, use language to resist foreign dominance. Then coming to hunger, hardship and revolt, 
enormous increase in population all over Europe. It reduced jobs, brought about large-scale rural migration to cities, overcrowded the cities, stiff competition between handmade goods and cheap machine-made goods, peasants burdened with feudal dues, rise of food prices, food shortage, peasants and weavers revolted. Then the third part that we spoke about was the revolution of the liberals of 1848, French monarchy uprooted by the revolt of 1848, liberal middle class demanded constitution and national unification. <coughs> Excuse me. In Germany, professionals, businessmen, artisans decided to vote for all German national assembly. Frankfurt Parliament organized in Church of St. Paul. The constitution was drafted. Germany to be governed through constitutional monarchy. When offered the crown, Frederick Wilhelm IV, the King of Prussia, rejected it. Social base of parliament shifted to the middle class dominance. Political associations formed by women for political rights. Conservative forces suppressed liberals. Fearing future revolution, monarchs granted concessions and introduced changes. Serfdom and bonded labor abolished. This brings us to two major topics of our chapter, Making of Germany, Making of Italy. So when we speak about the making of Germany, we talk about the conservatives who mobilize national sentiments to promote state power and seek political dominance of Europe. Middle class tried to unite Germany but was suppressed by monarchy and military with little support of the landowning class. Prussia emerged to unite Germany. Otto von Bismarck became the architect of this process. Three wars for seven years were fought with Austria, Denmark and France completed German unification. The Prussian King William, William I became the Emperor of United Germany. Currency, banking, legal and judicial system was legalized. Please refer to the original chapter video for this concept. This is just the chapter in a nutshell. Unification of Italy. Italy fragmented between seven states. Sardinia, Piedmont, ruled by Italian king. North Italy, under Austrian Habsburgs, was ruled by the Pope. South Italy was under the Bourbon kings of Spain. Italian language, too, had many dialects. Efforts of Mazzini in 1831 failed. Responsibility of unification fell on Victor Emmanuel II. Chief Minister Kever, through diplomacy, allied France to defeat Austria in 1859. Giuseppe Garibaldi, a revolutionary, to join the alliance and drove away the Spanish rulers. Thus, Italy was unified. In between, we come across the strange case of Britain. No British nation existed before the 18th century. Ethnic groups like English, Welsh, Scots inhabited British Isles, having their own cultural and political base. Growth of English nations in wealth and power, English Parliament seized monarchy in 1688. The Act of Union 1707 between England and Scotland formed United Kingdom of Great Britain. Systematic suppression of Scottish culture and language by English began and many were driven out of their homeland. The British helped the Protestants against Catholics of Ireland. Later, Catholic revolt too was suppressed. In 1801, Ireland was also incorporated forcibly into United Kingdom. Now I know there is too much to read here, but you have to read it. Visualizing 
the nation. Nations began to be portrayed as female figures called allegories. Ideas like liberty, justice and republic too were personified now as female figures. Allegories were erected at squares to mark national unity. One example of an allegory, Germania. Another example, Bharat Mata. Coins and stamps too carried their images. Marianne re represented the Republic of France. Germania portrayed German nation. Then we talk of the Balkan nations. So in the present day, we have these Balkan nations of Romania, Bulgaria, Albania, Greece, Macedonia, Croatia, the spelling is C-R-O-A-T-I-A, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Slovenia, Serbia, Montenegro. All these nations together, which are present-day nations, made the Balkan nations in those days. And nationalism and imperialism, we need to talk about the Balkan issue. Balkans became the source of nationalist tension in Europe after 1871. It was inhabited by Slavs and was under the control of the Ottoman Empire. It was too a region of geographical and ethnic variations. Ideas of nationalism swept over the entire Balkan region. One by one, different nationalities declared their independence through struggle. It later became one of the causes for World War I. It also became an area of conflict among its nationalities. Each state developed jealousy and hoped to expand at the cost of others. European powers further complicated the situation. They were struggling to prove their trade and military might over others. Countries like Russia, Germany, England, Austria, Hungary extended their control over the Balkan area. With this, I hope you have been able to take in the entire chapter in a nutshell, in a single video. I hope you were following it in your textbook as well. At any point in time, feel free to read on this video as many times as you want or go over the chapter videos as many times as you want to. I know I did not greet you for the new year. So before we end today's class, I welcome you to a brand new 2021 and hope that you are safe, sanitized, masked and studying hard. Welcome back. Hope you enjoy schooling with us. Thank you and have a nice day children.